Hi, I'm Spencer Short. Uh, I am the content creator and social media extraordinaire for McBain Camera. Uh, I work out of the main location on 107th Ave, but I peruse my way around the city uh, to different stores as needed. Uh, professionally, about six and a half years in general, since I was about five years old. Uh, my family had like a family communal camera that we would bring on like family trips and stuff. Um, so I kind of got my start in photography with a Canon T2, I think it was. Creating on my personal time, I like to, uh, to give myself like challenges and stuff so that I'm never, you know, stuck in a comfort zone or anything like that. And then when it comes to creating content for McBain, like I just find it easy to get inspired on the day. Like I very often will plan stuff out months in advance, but then sometimes it's like, oh, this would be a cool idea for a video. Let's test that. Okay, let's shoot it. Okay, let's edit it. All right, it's ready to go out as a post. So I don't know, I kind of fly by the seat of my pants in the same way that I over prepare for everything. I don't know if that answers the question. <laughs> I like to take kind of the James Gunn approach to creating video content in particular, where I'll pick the music before I start shooting anything. Um, I find music is just a really good way to get inspired. Uh, I'm guilty of listening to movie soundtracks while shooting short films or whatever. Um, and I, I once did a project where I used a, a temp song, which is where you, you plan the shoot around a certain song. And usually in like a real movie production, they'll take that temp song and then use it as a template for the original composition. I don't know how to compose music, so I ended up just keeping the temp song in the video. And then I got copyright claimed by Warner Brothers, so uh, maybe don't take that approach. <laughs> My answer is going to be twofold for that one. So the first is a very niche, kind of esoteric piece of gear. Uh, if you do a lot of particularly video editing, uh, it's this little editing interface called the Tour Box. It's this little black box with buttons and dials on it that you can customize with all of your editing functions. So I have it set so that you know one of the scroll wheels zooms in on my timeline, where another one will automatically cut and apply a filter. Um, so it's really just sped up the way that I interact with my editing interface. Uh, and then it works in Lightroom and Photoshop so that instead of having to slide your mouse on the sliders, you get a more tactile dial and you can really finely adjust stuff. And the other one, not to be too cheeky, but I'm gonna say my cell phone, not for the you know uh, millennial reason that I can't stay off social media, but more so as a creation tool. Um, I, I think the gatekeepy notion of real professionals don't use smartphones is, not only extremely harmed, harmful to anybody that wants to get into photography, but it's insulting to professionals that do use their phones for professional work. Obviously, just pointing your phone at somebody isn't gonna give you a great image, but if you know how to light and compose, you can get really good stuff out of these. And the fact that they do like AI machine learning editing on the fly, uh, you can airdrop your photos to your computer and then just like using it as a creative tool. Um, so the ability to have my scripts anywhere in the world, the ability to load a file on here to show to somebody if I'm at a coffee shop, just the fact that you can have like a whole ass computer in your pocket is pretty cool. I know that it's 2023 and smartphones have been a thing for a long time, but smartphones are cool. I shoot with the Sony a7 IV, um, mostly for Sony's autofocus. When I'm filming, most of the time, I'm gonna be by myself. Um, and I went with the a7 IV over something like the a7S III, which is more video oriented, because I still do photos from time to time. Needed the extra resolution. For me personally, to be fulfilled by a shoot, I just have to have a moment that was either I learned something or I got to put something that I did learn previously into action or, um, you know, I, I shot something that, you know, maybe I was trying to replicate something that somebody else shot and I did it just right. I think having a fulfilling shoot to for yourself is equally as important as having a fulfilling shoot for the person you're shooting for or the subject you're shooting. Um, so I always make sure to have a little fun with the shoots that I'm doing and not take myself too seriously. And if I find that I am, I try to throw in, you know, something that makes me stop taking myself so seriously. 
Um, and then in terms of having a fulfilling shoot on the client side, like if you're trying to be a freelancer, or you're, you know, offering your services to somebody, I think a successful shoot in that sphere would be that you and the client are both equally satisfied. Um, working as a freelancer does have its ins and outs and there are weird eccentricities to having to deal with the whims of a client that may not have the same creative ideas as you. Um, but I think navigating that and making sure that you're professional while also stating that, no, like this is my vision, you hired me, you, your vision is important, your creativity is important, you are as important as a photographer. So I think, yeah, I think that's just a very long-winded way to say <laughs> there are two types of fulfillment from a shoot, and if you can gain both from every shoot you do, uh, I think you'll inevitably fall even further in love with photography. I don't think you necessarily have to have anything to show for yourself to have a good shoot. You could forget your memory card and still have a good time hiking up the mountain, only to have you know two minutes of panic, I forgot my memory card. Um, but I think it's, it's about the journey and not the destination. So photography is, it's a very in-depth process. You can make it as in-depth as you want or you can be as simple with it as you want. And I think it's about the process and less about the results. So what if you get an out of focus shot? We shoot digital these days, you can just delete it and take another one. It's not like you're shooting on film anymore. And if you do shoot film, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Having done like freelance videography for as long as I have, I definitely have more projects that I don't want to ever show anybody ever again than I have projects that I'm really proud of. But I think that that's a, a sign of, if you're ever feeling that way where you look back on your own work and you're like, wow, this is terrible. It means you're getting better. Um, and I think it's, it's actually a good exercise. Once a year, go back in your hard drive, watch something that you produced a year ago that you were really proud of and critique the hell out of it. And you, if you can find 10 things that were wrong with it that you would do better next time, it means you're getting better. Um, and so I like to go back and rewatch my old work to rip myself apart. Um, but I'm really partial to shooting music videos because I find you can be really, really creative with them. Uh, you're often working with another very creative person, like the artist that produced the song. Um, whereas in other types of like freelance filmmaking, like wedding movies, you don't necessarily always have the same amount of creativity or flexibility. So I'd say music videos in particular are like my bread and butter. It's like hypocritical to say, don't worry about gear, but we're filming with, with nice equipment. Um, so I would say worry a little bit about gear, but don't worry about the gear that you think you should. Don't worry about the camera, worry about everything but the camera. So focus on building yourself a really good lighting setup. Focus on getting um, a good workflow from shooting your photos to backing them up to the cloud, to editing them, to backing up your edits. Um, get in the habit of triple saving everything if you can. Programs crash all the time and losing work is never fun. Um, but make sure like, if you want to get into, into professional photography, I think the most important point is that you have a base of everything but the camera. Um, so build your knowledge base just shooting with your phone. Practice composition, composition shooting with your cell phone before going out and spending thousands of dollars on a tool that you might not know how to use. Um, so to go back to that first point, it isn't about the tool, it's about how you use it, but make sure you have everything else around that tool, if that makes sense. It's more about developing and like a, a well-developed and well-rounded skill set than it is about learning the ins and outs of one piece of gear. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe and enable notifications. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at McBain Camera, and visit us online at www.mcbaincamera.com.